Hey everyone and welcome back. Now before we actually begin installing any type of software on our system, what I want to do is to talk to you about something called virtual environments. So much like the same way when we happen to spin up a virtual machine within VMware or VirtualBox, we can easily have a nice isolated environment whereby anything we install on one virtual machine does not affect anything we install on another virtual machine. That means we could have different versions of particular systems or particular operating systems without having to worry about anything clashing or causing any type of issues. Now in a similar way, when we happen to be developing with Python, we are going to install a whole bunch of things called Python libraries. Now these Python libraries are really just Python codes which are, in effect, the tools that we use when we want to automate networks. Now, in the same vein, we can install some type of tool. Now, these tools may actually be utilizing particular dependencies. Simply put, the code is relying on another code base in order to operate. Now, depending on the version of what you happen to be installing, this can also cause a clash. So what we want to do is we want to have a nice isolated environment, the same way we get when we install a virtual machine, but we want to have that for our Python development environment. And this is exactly what a Python virtual environment is going to allow us to do. So we could install a particular Python program in one virtual environment on our command line and pull in all the dependencies for that particular tool and right after we could spin up another virtual environment and install a completely different version of the same tool if we wish. Say for example, an old version and neither will have any effect on the other. So this just makes our life much, much easier. You don't have to use virtual environments for every single tool. But honestly, I would just get into the habit of using them all the time. It really just makes your life much, much easier and free of headache. So the very first thing that I want to show you is how we can actually create these virtual environments. And then after that, we will look at how we can install something called pip. This is the package installer for Python, and this is what we're going to use to install all these various types of tools to automate our network, but doing so within this nice isolated environment. So let's head to VS Code then. So if I do an ls, we can see this directory happens to be empty. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to create a virtual environment within this. So the syntax is as follows. I'm going to say Python 3 and then dash M to call a particular module and the module is called Venv. This is the program that is going to create the virtual environment, hence the name. Now, whatever I actually specify next is going to be the directory that holds everything that the virtual environment needs. So you can call this absolutely anything you wish. You could call this pizza if you wanted, but a good convention is to say .venv. So if I hit enter now and I do an ls, it looks like nothing is actually created. And this is because I placed a dot before the name. Now this is just some basic Linux functionality when you happen to create a directory with a dot before, it's known as a hidden directory. So it's not going to show up in your regular listing. Instead, you would have to do a special listing to show all the files. If I do an LA, we can actually see this dot venv actually does exist. But the fact that it's hidden keeps it out of view and nice and neat. So what I want to do is I want to change into this directory here, this .venv, and I can do so by doing cd.venv. If I hit enter, we can actually see the prompt changes and we are inside this directory. If I list the contents here, we can see all of these other directories and files. And to actually activate my virtual environment, what I want to do is to use the source command and then I'm going to call the bin directory. And within the bin directory, we can say activate. If I hit enter now, notice at the left hand side, we have this parentheses and inside of that dot venv, this just tells you that the virtual environment is active. So anything that I happen to install whilst I am within the virtual environment is just going to be localized to that virtual environment and not installed onto my system globally. And for whatever reason, if I wanted to deactivate the virtual environment, i.e. to leave it, I just type the command deactivate and look, that little parentheses happens, to, that little parentheses happens to disappear. Again, we want to activate it. So I'll say source bin activate. 
and I'll go back to my main directory here, Juniper, let me clear the screen. So now what I want to install is pip, this package installer for Python. So what I'm going to first say is sudo, which is the command in Linux to invoke admin rights, and I'll say apt install, apt being the package manager for Ubuntu, and then I will say python3 hyphen pip. Now if I hit enter, we can see I already have pip installed on my system. But if you're just starting out, then you're probably not going to have this on your system. So go ahead and do this command. But if you happen to run into a problem, then I would suggest you do a sudo apt update to update your system and then rerun the command. So with pip now installed, let's try actually installing particular packages and libraries using this tool. So the way we can do this is by saying pip3 install and then selecting the name of the package. Now the first thing that we're going to actually install is something called IPython. This is going to allow us to write Python code interactively and it can be very, very useful when writing your scripts as well as for particular debugging purposes. So whilst we are within this virtual environment, let's try installing this. So if I hit enter now, this should begin downloading IPython. Give it a little moment. And bam, IPython should be installed. So if I clear the screen, and if I now say IPython to execute the program, check this out, we're actually within this Python interpreter. So I can just say print John and hit enter and it spits out John back to us. I can exit back out. And the cool thing to know is that if we happen to deactivate our virtual environment so that we're no longer in it, if I try to run IPython again, notice it actually says IPython is not installed in the system. That's because it's not installed system-wide, it's only available within this little virtual environment. So again, I can go into my virtual environment, reactivate it again. Now that I'm inside it, IPython is going to be available to me once again. So this is the workflow that we're going to be using over and over and over again within this course when we are automating Juniper Networks. Now that we have a rough idea of some good practices and principles, how about we begin installing our very first tool that we can use to automate networks. And well, that's what we're doing in the very next Nuggets. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in a career in IT or just looking to brush up your IT skills, then be sure to visit cbtnuggets.com for a free trial.